Welcome to Retrobassin. If you tuned into the show last week, you know that I've been trying to thin the herd a little bit on my epic tackle wall. When I first moved into the new Retrobassin studio, I picked up two different eight by four foot pegboards from Lowe's and installed them on the wall behind me. Surprising to even me, I had more lures than the wall could hold. And as a result, I put a number of those lures on sale on eBay for listings starting at $1 last week. It's been fun to watch those auctions progress and hopefully some bass and buds out there are gonna get a few pieces of old school gold courtesy uh, <laughs> my past buying habits for the channel. Well, I had such good feedback from that and I still have some new lures <laughs> to get rid of so I thought I would do it again. All right, well, this episode of Retro Bass, and we are going to continue with that trend as I liquidate some of my Retro Bass and old school, new in the package arsenal of baits. And I'm gonna talk about a number of eBay listings that I have. And don't worry, for each one of these, I'm gonna drop a direct link to that listing down below in the comment section. But if in doubt, you can always search Retro Bass and on eBay. Well, last week we started the bidding on each of these for $1 each, and I had such a good response, I thought we would maybe double down on that a little bit, except this week, every lot you see here is gonna start at one penny. Each lot is also gonna come with one of these, a retro bass and decal, tackle box, or boat slap, and I will make sure to include that with each of the listings, and if you win multiple ones, I'll throw in a couple of slaps for you. Well, the star of last week's show was definitely the color selector selection of Cotton Cordell rattle spots. So I thought we would start off with a, another new in the package color selector item. If you look over my shoulder uh, right here, you do see a uh, color selector kit. This is a pretty cool kit and I actually have, well, a few of them. This is called the Select a Color Custom Lore Kit from Color Selector. And it is a pretty cool looking kit. It comes with three different lures. Looks like one from Rebel, one from Hedden, and one from Cotton Cordell. So it looks like a fast track shad of some sort, a Hedden tiny torpedo, and a Cotton Cordell rattle spot. But what's interesting about this kit is that notice the lures are all in a bone white. Well, the secret is what you see below here, a set of six markers. The goal of this fishing kit is you're supposed to get on the water with your Dr. Lauren Hill color selector, test the water and figure out which of these colors is best suited for the conditions that day. From there, you can color the lures and actually using a alcohol soaked wipe or rag, you can clean the color off. I do have a couple of these kits. I opened one, I've got one left on the shelf, but this is a really, really clean kit actually. For something as old as it is, I don't see any uh, bubbling up of the packaging. There is the back with Dr. Lauren Hill <laughs> in all his glory. And this is in pretty good shape if you did wanna hang it in your display. Well, I do have one of these kits out of the package and I'll show you some of the different components of it. So here are some of the different lures. First off, you've got this, a pretty nice bone white head and tiny torpedo. It does still have the eyes on it though, look at that. Next is, ooh, a really nice cotton cordell rattle spot. And that is in the old school uh, body shape. And it also does have the eye on there. And last, a nice lure from Rebel. I think that's a fast track shallow diving shad. And that also does have bone white, but it's got the eyes painted. But like I said, the secret to the kit are these markers here. And I don't know if you'd want to open this kit if you get it, but just in case you did, I can confirm at least on the markers that I've got that they are still in a wet usable shape and you do get six different markers. You get the green, the blue, the purple, the red, orange, and the yellow. 
So this will be listed as lot number one on the Retrobass and eBay page. And yes, uh, this kit plus a Retrobass and slap, I will start at one cent. Recently on a trip down to the west coast of Florida, I stumbled upon a local tackle shop by the name of Gator Gyms. And there in a discount bin, I found a number of really cool old bombers with a very special color I'd never seen before called Jim Bickle's Blood Bomber. Well, it turns out that Jim Bickle is also Gator Jim who happened to be in the shop that day. And he told me the story of a number of years ago when Bomber would do custom lures, he tested out a number of different colors before landing on this one the Blood Bomber. This is a super cool, pretty unique color of bomber in a jointed version. It is a gold bomber. It's got a red belly and a black top. But the secret to the Blood Bomber is the really cool red undertones in the gill and along the body. Well, I made it back to Gator Gyms about a month later and the Bass and Buds had done good and they pretty much cleared him out of all of his blood bombers. All that Gator Gym had left were 11 of these baits and of course I picked them up to bring them back here because I had a feeling some Bass and Buds may not have been able to get their hand on any blood bombers when I first posted that video. So as part of listing number two on this week's eBay lot haul, I have got four new in the package blood bombers. So these are again of the bomber long a jointed variety. All four are the four that you see here which are new in the package. Definitely ready to display or cast. And in addition to listing the four of these for one cent and throwing in a retro bass and a slap, I also am going to throw in a Gator Jim's decal as well. Just as a little homage to Gator Gyms and to uh, pass along a little bit of retro bass in history. So that is it for lot number two. Well, without a doubt, one of my favorite lures of all time is this spinnerbait. And one of my favorite old school spinnerbaits I loved to throw as a youth was a Stanley spinnerbait. Well, I've got a pretty big collection of spinnerbaits on the wall, but you know what, I figured I would thin it out a little bit and share this lot of Stanley Vibershaft spinnerbaits. I will go through these one at a time, but for the lot, it is one, two, three, four, five spinnerbaits, plus a little extra I will show you at the end. So I will try to go through these in size order as best I could. That's the way I initially had them set up. All right. So going from smallest to largest, the first one is this, a quarter ounce vibra shaft. It looks like that is a willow leaf and a Colorado blade in a color that you're gonna see a lot in this lot. I'm pretty sure it is called Sun Brim. I love these old colors and that's one of the big reasons I still throw old baits like this. Truth be told, uh, some of these skirts do have some issues, but I will address that uh, at the end. <laughs> The next one is this one. It is a, another Stanley Viber Shaft. This one in the same color, but a 3 eighths of an ounce version. That looks like that's also the Willow Leaf and Colorado Blade combo. The next one is a half ounce version of the Viber Shaft, but this one has that unique Thumper Blade. And that is a pretty cool Colorado blade also, again, in that sun perch color. I hope I'm saying that one right. Next one is a half ounce willow leaf and Colorado blade in the sun perch. And the last one is uh, another sun perch in a three quarter ounce willow leaf and Colorado blade. Like I mentioned, one of the cool things, but also one of the issues with these old spinnerbaits is the skirt. And if you're looking to fish these, what you might find all too often is when you open up a 30 plus year old package, the actual silicone skirt is in just fine shape, but that little ring, I don't know if it's a latex tube that holds it in place, nine times out of 10, it is dry rotted through. So what I always do if I get a new spinnerbait like this and I want to keep the skirt, and on a bait like this, I totally would. I actually get some dental floss, and before I ever make first cast, 
I tie a number of loops around there to secure that skirt in place. Here is a old school shoestring Dubois tornado, which is not in this listing, but you can see there that thing, the skirt was about to fall off and I just used some dental floss to hold it in place. And now that skirt will never come off. In addition to those five Stanley wedges, I thought I'd throw this in here. This is a pretty cool find that I found at a local tackle shop in Northeast Texas, I think, or maybe it was Northwest, but it is a Plano spinnerbait rack. <laughs> I don't exactly know how this thing works. I think it goes in your tackle box. And if you look on the side, let's see here. Oh, there we go. If you look on the side, you can see there are some grooves where you can hang a number of different spinnerbaits. So that is it for lot number three. For years and years, my PB largemouth bass was caught on this exact lure, a power pack frog. One of, in my opinion, the greatest gimmick baits of all time. This thing hit the shelves in 1994 after being patented and developed by a Dallas, Texas attorney. This thing would eventually morph into the Chuck Woolery Moto Minnow, but this is the original, the Power Pack. I've got two different lots available. The first one is going to be for five of this, the Power Pack Frog. I'll go ahead and show you how this thing works, but the gist of it is when you tie this on your line and you go to make a cast, the backward motion of the lure pulls the string. When you cast the lure, this top water lands and the legs start kicking. They actually kick for a little bit longer because of the water resistance, but once it stops, this is where this bait gets really cool. You twitch the bait sort of like you would a hula popper and each twitch pulls the string and activates the legs again. This is a really cool bait. This is a frog here. It's got two legs that are actually rubber, unlike the first version of the bait. So hookup ratios are actually not too bad. And it's got a single treble hook below. I'm gonna do my best to get them in frame so you see what you do get. But here are the five power pack frogs that you get in the lot. And all of these are actually in a pretty great display shape or fishing shape, depending on what you want to do with the baits. And again, I'll list these five for one cent on the eBay. Next bait sticking with the power pack theme is this classic power pack shad in a chrome with a blue back. The power pack shad works pretty much the same way as the frog. Upon the back cast, the line is pulled. And when the bait lands in the water, that tail starts fluttering. This is the one I've probably fished more than uh, even the frog. I tend to like the action of the shad a little bit better. It tends to be a little bit more uh, cicada-like. And this one does come with two treble hooks there and a nice tail. Again, <laughs> my favorite part though by far, aside from the fish, is the packaging. Just what a great looking gimmicky package that, yeah, definitely snagged a teenage retro bass and when I saw this on the peg at the local tackle shop. So here are the five power pack shads that you'll get. All five are in the same color. Again, if you like to display a couple and fish a couple, more than enough to do that. And this listing will be on eBay for one cent plus a retro bass and slap. All right, two more listings left to go. Uh, the next one is a little piece of retro bass in history that I was uh, a little bit bummed to give away, to be honest with you. This may not look like much, uh, but this is a card of Finney Super Duper spinners, sort of look like a H&H &H spinner. And this card comes with one, two, three, four, let's count these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven spinners on here. It is a pretty unique green color that you just don't see too often in a spinner bait. And this thing definitely would catch a pond or creek bass or two. Now, this is special to me because this is actually a card I picked up on my first ever stop to Jensen Fishing Tackle in Austin, Texas. That was uh, really a cool experience to stumble upon this tackle shop and uncover some lures that I don't think had seen sunlight, much less an angler's attention in decades. 
This is one I had to snag. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the eBay in case somebody wants to share a little piece of retro bass in history. The only change on this I did make is I added a little plastic tab here in case you did want to hang this on your tackle wall. But that is it, a Finney Super uh, H spinner in a 3 8 ounce. So yeah, totally a copycat of the H&H lower, but a really cool, cool old school color pattern. All right, uh, last listing of the day. Well, if you saw my video about crashing the 2024 iCast, you know that I was able to flag down a number of my fishing childhood heroes, including Hank Parker, Roland Martin, and Bill Dance. Well, there was one fishing personality I was able to get eyes on but not talk to, and that was, of course, Mr. Jimmy Houston. That's a bummer because I think Chunkin' and Winding was pretty much the soundtrack to my youth. But uh, as a little bit of a tribute to that episode and also Mr. Houston, I'm going to put this up for sale. This is one of my favorite baits from Jimmy, and he actually didn't have his name on too, too many baits, unlike some of the other fishing personalities of the day. But I absolutely loved this Excalibur Pro Autograph Series. It had a number of baits, and you can actually see a number of them over my shoulder here. But this is a nice one. It's a dual set of Rattlin spots from Cotton Cordell. And it's got two different sizes, which I love. The larger half ounce and the smaller quarter ounce. This is in, man, one of my favorite colors of all time. And a color that, honestly, I feel like they ought to release again. And there, of course, is Mr. Houston himself. So this is a really nice, uh, hard to find, uh, new in the package, sort of two lure kit from Mr. Houston. It's one that I probably would not open if I only had one. It is definitely a display worthy piece. It's in pretty good shape on the front and the back. And I will list this thing for one, nope, not one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> one cent. I have to remember that before I put this video up. Well, Bass and Buds, thank you for tuning in and uh, let me know if you like this kind of content. Uh, it's always a challenge on the Retro Bass and Show to figure out what kind of videos to put up. Quite frankly, I've got decades worth of material in this noggin of mine and uh, each week it's not a matter of figuring out uh, exactly what I'm going to come up with. It's just kind of what I'm going to whittle it down to. Uh, the weather's been a little bit rainy up in Northeast Florida, so I've not been on the water too, too much. So I've been passing my time on eBay, and hopefully uh, you guys come along for that ride. By the way, if you're looking for some more old school content, you can click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep that carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.